With stock markets continuing to set new all-time highs, it can be difficult to know what to do. Should we continue to buy stocks even though they're setting all-time highs? Should we wait for a correction or a crash? Well, luckily, we can get some advice from one of the best investors in the world. Jack Bogle was a legend investor and one of the all-time greats. He was the founder of Vanguard, creator of the index fund, and the whole passive investing method. Warren Buffett even said that Jack has done more for the individual investor than just about anybody in history. This is going to be a very special video because we will be looking at and breaking down one of Jack's most important speeches he ever gave. The reason it's the most important is because it was given at a time when the stock market was continuing to set new all-time highs. Although this speech was given in 1997, which led up to the dot-com boom, what's amazing is that this speech could have been given today. It's that relevant. As always, before we jump in, if you do find anything useful in the video or just a big fan of Jack Bogle, be sure to drop a like. That would be much appreciated. Okay, sit back and relax guys. Here is the legend John C. Bogle as he explains how to invest when stocks are setting new all-time highs. Okay, so here is what we've got coming up. We're going to break this Jack Bogle speech into four parts. The first part, you'll hear Jack discuss the current situation with the stock market setting all-time highs. We'll then look at the two possible outcomes of what we could be facing. We'll then answer the question, well, should we invest in international stocks instead? Would we get a better return? Are they safer? And then we'll finish with Jack Bogle's five investing principles on how to invest when stocks are setting all-time highs. In this booming stock market, it sometimes seems as if everybody is getting rich. Uh, we're at the pinnacle of a historic 15-year bull market, and the question I'll try and address today is, where do we go from here? It's a good question. You may recall that the first half of the 1990s decade began with five so-so years. Equity returns were rather mediocre, about 8.7% a year. But in the two and one half years since then, annualized returns have averaged 33% overall annualized. I don't know of another single pundit a single pundit who forecast gains of this magnitude, nor for that matter who forecast the earnings gains that underlie this boom in stock prices. Putting it all together, market valuations have reached extraordinarily, extraordinary and to me worrisome peaks. The basic ratio of market price to book value has risen from, risen from four times to six and a half times. The price earnings ratio has risen from 15 times to 20 times. Dividend yields. Yes, I'm still old-fashioned enough to believe that dividends still matter. They've fallen from 2.7 to 1.6 percent, and only at the 1929 peak, the 1973 peak, and the 1987 peak did the dividend yield ever get as low as 2.7 percent, and now it's 110, 1.1 percent below that. To make matters worse, from the standpoint of a lot of investors, the passive, invisible hand of the market is putting to shame the returns earned by the active managers who don't buy the market, or so they say. They buy stocks. They allege it's not a st stock market, it's a market of stocks. As silly a statement as one could possibly imagine. For example, while our passive Standard & Poor's 500 index fund is up 104% in two and a half years, this two and a half boom period, the average actively mu managed mutual fund is up 74%, only three quarters as much. In all, spec uh, similarities with 1929 abound. And I don't hesitate to haul up the warning flag. In short, it seems to me that speculation, betting on higher and higher valuations, is in the driver's seat. Investment, betting on the fundamentals of dividend yields and earnings growth, is in the back seat, probably even in the rumble seat. But when speculation drives stock returns in the short run, while it drives stock returns in the short run, it's the crystal clear lesson of history, at least for the past 200 years, that in the long run, fundamentals drive returns. 
So what he was saying is that when he was giving the speech, the stock market was at the top of a 15 year bull run. And that is very similar to what is happening right now. The PE ratios were double the historic average. So this is a PE ratio chart and it goes back over a hundred years. So what is PE? It's price to earnings, which is what is the current stock price? This is how much companies are asking you to pay for their stock versus their earnings, which is how much profit they are making. So you'll notice that when PE ratios are really high, companies are asking for a very high stock price compared to how much profit they're actually making. And when PE ratios are really low, this is when stocks are a bargain. They have a low stock price compared to the profit they are generating. So the historical PE average going back 100 years is just over 15. Now what's really interesting is that when Jack Bogle gave this speech, it was in 1997, and this was leading up to the dot-com boom and crash. And interestingly, this is PE ratios today. As you can see, it was almost an identical environment. Next, he goes on to say that there are two possible outcomes that we are facing. Let's take a look. So that tension has to be resolved. Let me give you two extreme possibilities. One, a market drop of 35%, just for the fun of it. This would lower price earnings ratio to a more nor ratios to a more norm normal level of about 13 times. Two, we're in a new era in which stock returns average 15%, 14% earnings growth and a 1% dividend yield, rather than the long-term historic norm of about 10.5%. 6.5% earnings growth plus a 4% dividend yield. In short, a new era of boom times and high valuations that would justify today's price levels. The bull's case is quite beautiful. You ought to hear it. It's entitled, of all things, The Long Boom. The thesis, as you might imagine, is based on the triumph of the United States and the end of major wars. New technology, a truly global market, corporate restructuring, high economic growth, and waves of technology. So basically two possible outcomes. Number one, a market drop of around 35%, and this will bring the PE ratios back to normal levels. Or number two, the idea that we're now in a new era, and that's due to advancements in industry and technology. So what about international stocks? Can we get a better return or would we get more safety by investing internationally or maybe emerging markets? Let's take a look. But what of the global stock markets? Are they a better bet? Alas, ever the skeptic, I'm a bit doubtful about the global thesis, which essentially goes like this. But since the US represents 40% of the value of the $20 trillion world stock market, a fully diversified portfolio, a truly diversified portfolio, invested 40% in the US and 60% in Europe, the Pacific and the emerging markets, provide the highest future risk adjusted return. Risks, so the thesis goes, should be lower because global markets fluctuate in different magnitudes at different times in US markets. But here history doesn't help us very much. In the 70s and the 80s, for example, U.S. investors in foreign stocks earned returns of 17% a year, terrific returns, versus 11% in the U.S. with not much difference in risk. Was it precedent? Hardly. Was it a precursor? No. So far in the 1990s, U.S. stocks are up 17% a year, foreign stocks just 5%, and no one can predict which of those patterns, if either for that matter, we face in the years ahead. Skeptical as I am, however, I will admit there's a place for international investing from a diversification stand, standpoint. And I myself have no hesitancy in recommending an international position, maybe 5% of equities, but certainly to no, to no more than 20%, uh, given the extra economic and financial risks and ever elusive, elusive ability to forecast the strength of the dollar. So with international stocks, in general, it looks like Jack Bogle is not a big fan. He mentioned one time period where international did outperform the US, but then he said more recently the US outperformed international. So it looks like it could go either way. 
And Jack went on to say that he recommends anywhere from 5% to 20% to be invested in international or emerging markets. Okay, so to finish, here are Jack's five investing principles as to what we should be doing right now. On that note then, let me close with five simple principles, a few ideas of what you might wanna think about, principle of investing that may help you. First, invest you must. The biggest risk is the long-term risk of not putting your money to work at a generous return. Not the short-term, but nonetheless real risk of price volatility. Even though stocks seem very high, Consider what I said in my book, a little plug there. Uh, never think you know more than the market does. You're apt to be wrong if you do. Second, give yourself all the time you can. At the extremes, if you're in the 20s, begin to invest in stocks even if you've only got a little bit. If you're in the 60s, invest more in bonds and less in stocks. But always remember that compound interest is a miracle and time is your friend. Third have rational expectations about future returns and be mentally prepared for market declines. Always remember, in good times and bad times alike, this too shall pass away. If this too shall indeed pass away, and your emotions can kill you, you should keep them out of your investment program because impulse is your foe. Fourth, rely on simplicity. Simplicity above all. There are too many witch doctors in this business. Basic investing is simple. A sensible asset allocation to stocks, bonds, and reserves, a middle-of-the-road selection of diversified funds, a careful balancing of risks and returns, and lest we forget costs, which can kill long-run returns too. Don't disregard low-cost index funds. That's my only plug. Warren Buffett just happens to agree on buttressed by his support on the importance of cost and on the value of indexing. A nice third-party endorsement, if you will. And fifth and last, when you followed all of these four rules, as I said, and I've meant, a thousand times, if not ten thousand times, no matter what happens, stay the course. Good luck in investing in these interesting times. Thank you. So there you are guys, that was the advice from a true legend himself, John C. Bogle, known to his friends as Jack. When putting together this video, it was amazing to see just how much of a similar position that we're in right now versus where they were in 1997. They too had experienced a 15 year bull run in stocks. They too also had PE ratios double the historic average. So to sum up and finish, here were Jack Bogle's five investing principles as to what to do when stocks are hitting all time highs. Number one, invest you must. So the data shows that it's impossible to time the markets and the most costly thing you can do is not be invested. Number two, give yourself all the time that you can. So if you're in your 20s, then you may be 100% in stocks as you've got a lot of time to recover just in case anything happens. If you're in your 60s, then maybe allocate much more of your portfolio into bonds. Number three, be prepared for market declines. So the stock market doesn't just go up and we have to get used to dips and declines. But always remember, this too shall pass. Number four, keep things simple. So obviously he was a big fan of index funds and passive investing, but it's a very good point. Investing doesn't have to be complicated. And number five, above all things, no matter what, you must stay the course. I have to admit, I really enjoyed putting all this together and I hope you found this useful too. In fact, just one favor to ask, if you did find anything useful in the video or you're just a big fan of Jack Bogle, be sure to drop a like, that would be much appreciated. If you haven't yet subscribed, then click below and join us. I do have some great videos coming up that you don't want to miss. Okay, cheers guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.